thing good about her was her bravery. She travelled halfway across the world when she was only 25. She left all that she knew in her home country and came to a new place. She felt the call and the call of, of our Māori people. She became us. She became a Māori and her whole life and her ways were Māori. To the Māori people, she was a mother sent from God. When Mother Mary Orber came, <laughs> new light. They could see this new light in her that changed, just changed the whole atmosphere of Hiruhara. She devoted her life, um, like every part of her life, to help the poor. She didn't um, stop to think about herself for a second. I think she used every tool that she had. You know, she'd studied, she'd she had acquired all these skills and she put them to work for the purpose of, of you know, our most vulnerable. She discovered and acquired and accumulated the knowledge of um, natural medicines, but not to acquire it for profit. In fact, to use it for those who were truly sick and those who were outside of the systems of medicine and couldn't receive that. And I think she saw Christ in everyone, regardless of creed or of with all creeds or none. It was just anyone that needed help and how much she gave to them and she did for them. Like all the things that she did, like the home compassion and the soup kitchens that she made. She wasn't afraid of, of um, politicians. She wasn't afraid of who was the head. If she knew that something was important, then she went straight to the top. Her faith was just remarkable. Yeah, and that was the basis of everything she did, was her faith in God, that in Him all things were possible. She knew that. I mean, she lived this great life, but it's like the sisters say to people today, it's being the best you can be where you are now. So, and that's the small things as well. So it's things like being kind, and things like being grateful. As a Catholic, her absolute commitment to live the gospel, and um, that had a big personal cost in her life, but um, it never stopped her. What's strong in my heart is that she saw the beauty of God, something beautiful in every person, no matter what. In the age of selfies and self-centeredness, there you have the embodiment of compassion. So it's a motion of the heart, of the soul, of the mind, of the body that makes you suffer for others as if you are that other person. And then she embodied that. She is the embodiment of compassion. So God gave her that gift to feel other people's problems, challenges, pains, and heal them. If we did as much as she did for everyone, it would, this, it would, our world would be so much so different. She's a woman whose story needs to be told. I think she, I, I cannot think of a more remarkable New Zealand woman, full stop. What struck me just hearing early on is how she lived a life of compassion and that, that compassion was rooted in faith and how that compassion changed our nation, that she did tangibly transform the culture and the spirit and the laws and the institutions of our country. And it is that, that compassion, you know, that, that being really humble, being with, being practical, um, and that's something I'd like everyone to know about about her and to recognise in themselves, to recognise in New Zealand, you know, our approach to the world is very OBR. I think she's undervalued as a key role model in New Zealand history. She's the Mother Teresa of New Zealand. A grace like Suzanne's has neither beginning nor ending because it's God's grace, it's, it's, it's eternal. So if we are humble enough to become a new chain, a new link in that human change has started, she'll never be forgotten. And especially when you engage not with the religion, um, not with the strictures of, of good behaviour in society of the day, but when you engage with the radical voice and invitations of God, 
You have the most exciting of adventures of your life and at the same time it's not just all about me, my, I. You actually get to bless other people and then you get to see them flourish and that's also incredibly exciting.